Well, folks, joining me on this particular episode of rockposer.com, I'm joined by, well, in my mind, certainly, and quite a few others, an absolute legend in uh, the world of blues and blues rock. That is none other than Mr. Walter Trout. Welcome to rockposer.com. Hey, great to be here, man. Well, obviously, uh, we've got you on uh, this time to talk about Rocking the Blues 2019, uh, where you're joined by, again, two uh, very esteemed guitarists, none other than uh, Mr. Johnny Lang and Mr. Chris Barris. It's going to be big fun, man. A lot of guitars going that night. There is indeed. I mean, obviously, Chris is a rising star, and obviously, um, you've you've done some stuff together with the Supersonic Blues Machine album, for instance. And obviously, Johnny's been around for well, quite a few years. Yeah, it's going to be good, man. Johnny is a good friend of mine. Um, I've played a bunch of shows with him. Um, Chris is going to be our first time playing together, and I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, Chris is a, a, just a phenomenal guitarist. He's, I mean, the last couple of years for him, I sort of his rise in status, shall we say, has been quite phenomenal. I mean, he's played sort of local gigs to here, to small audiences, and now he's playing, you know, big venues. Yeah, I think the supersonic blues machine w- was really good for him too. You know, that that's a great band to play with. I've done a lot of, I've done two albums with those guys and done a lot of shows with them. Well, for Britsy himself, has been a guest um, with rockpose.com in the past um, and great guy. And seeing those guys play live um, last year with uh, Billy Gibbons as well, which is absolutely incredible. Yeah, awesome. But obviously, we're talking about Rocking the Blues, um, which kicks off, just checking the dates here, 23rd of May in Berlin. Yep. What's the, what's the blues scene like in Berlin? I know what it's like for sort of most of Europe, but Germany's not sort of... Um, somewhere where it sort of springs to mind blues wise rock wise absolutely well i i can tell you that i've been touring germany with my band since 1989 and we do uh big shows and they're always well attended and my my records sell good there so you know germany's been great for me i i love playing there obviously you know strangers of these shores obviously you're playing the o2 forum on the 4th of june um a show which i'm i'm hoping to get to myself since it's my birthday why not have a treat for myself but yeah. say, i mean i've seen uh, i've seen yourself play over here quite a few times and and met you uh, a few times with mutual friends with jason from rotor sound for instance and you've never ever put on a bad show you've absolutely you know it is a full-on show to, uh, to my mind well thank you and uh, Jason is an awesome guy, and what a great musician he is too. Mm. He makes yeah, I've got, I've got some of his music, I think. Yeah, so it, he passed me on some of his stuff. Oh, blimey, long, long time ago. Funny enough, I actually stumbled across the CD when I was when I was packing uh, a couple of days ago, and thought, right, I must have another listen to that. Yeah, he does a lot of different styles too, and he he's really a killer songwriter, also. So apart from obviously rocking the blues, what other plans have you got? I mean, I say it's great to have you back in the UK. Um, you know, what other plans have you got sort of touring wise lined up? Oh, man. Well, I'll be leaving. Um, I'll be leaving on the 20th of March where I will tour the States until the end of April, except for two days at the end of March. I'll be in Germany for two days. And then I'll come back and I'll keep touring America. Um, And then in May, I'll be home for only two weeks and I'll come over and I'll do the Rock and the Blues tour, um, which will take me through mid-June. And then I'm going to come home and uh, tour the States all summer. Um, And then in uh, October, I will be back in the UK for, I think, seven or eight shows. Excellent. What's it like um, scene-wise in America? It's, uh, it seems to be a sort of a, a strange entity lately regarding sort of live music. It seems to be more sort of almost akin to them wanting to watch tribute bands rather than uh, original acts. Well, I think tribute bands do much better in Europe and the UK than they do over here. Um, okay. There's not that many tribute bands over here that I'm aware of, but um, I don't know. For me, the, the scene over here is great. I, I'm, 
I have all the the work I can stand. I actually have to turn down gigs, you know. So, I mean, I have to turn down gigs so that I have a few few days at home now and then. And uh, so, you know, I'm I think it's great over here myself. But maybe for an up and coming musician, it might not be so great. I don't know. But I've been at it this year for me. It, it marks 50 years of uh oh, yeah. doing gigs you know so been at it a while for those of uh obviously listeners who may be not overly familiar with uh your body of work let's go back i mean you know when you started off with uh john mail and the blues breakers i mean that that's uh that's a phenomenal start to a career really well that wasn't a start that was that was in the middle of it i started playing gigs in 1969 um, I was in back on the East Coast. I was playing in various bands. I, I toured the, the East Coast with a blues man named Louisiana Red, who's kind of a legendary guy. I right. moved to L.A. in 1974. Um, I started playing in a band with Jesse Edwin Davis, who was John Lennon's guitarist. Um, I played with Jesse for two years. Jesse, among other things, played the solo on Dr. My Eyes by Jackson Brown. Um, Jesse played the concert for Bangladesh with Bob Dylan and George Harrison. And I played in Jesse's band for two years when I moved to L.A. And from there, I started playing with um, John Lee Hooker, Big Mama Thornton, Percy Mayfield, Lowell Folsom. Eddie Cleanhead Vincent, Pee Wee Creighton, um, uh, Bobby Hatfield from the Righteous Brothers. Um, and from there, I went, as I said, I went to John Lee Hooker, um, Big Mama Thornton, I probably mentioned. But from John Lee Hooker, I went to Canned Heat. I played with of Canned course. Heat for five years. And then after Canned Heat is when I joined John Mayall. So by the time I got in John's band, I already had a long career. What got you, um, was it something that you approached John or did John approach you? John approached me. I was in Canned Heat. He had the original Blues Breakers back together with Mick Taylor and John McVie. This was in 1981. Um, we did three shows opening for them. John came to me and said, um, is Canned Heat, what's Canned Heat doing? I said, well, we're going to take three months off. And he said, I'd, I'd like to hear you play rhythm guitar for Mick Taylor. And I said, OK. So the next thing I knew, I was on tour with Mick Taylor, John Mayall and John McVie and Colin Allen on the drums. And I was playing rhythm guitar for Mick Taylor. And then uh, John started a new band, a new Blues Breakers in 1984. And I joined him and stayed with him through 89 when I quit and made my first solo album. So, um, you know, he heard me playing with Canned Heat and invited me to play in his band. I mean, just the list of people that you just said that you've played with. I mean, it, it is just an incredible who's who of blues history. Well, it was it was quite an education. Some of the things <laughs> I learned might have been better not to learn. I might have <laughs> not needed a liver transplant, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it's been pretty, pretty amazing life so far. Well, of course, it's wonderful that you know after all that um, business that you went through regarding the liver transplant and you know the the generosity and friendship and love from around the world uh, for you in that period. Um, I mean, that just must have knocked you sideways. It was. It was pretty incredible, really. Um, the way the blues community kind of rallied around me and my wife and helped us, um, we, we wouldn't have made it without them. Not, not, just, not just the love they showed and the letters and the cards and the prayers, but they helped us financially because uh, in the States, we couldn't have gotten that operation without their help. And um, it's, it's really, quite moving really when I think of it and quite humbling and I feel that it's my responsibility now for those people who who came to our rescue it's my responsibility when I go out there to just play my very best 
and to put out my very best work on my records. And um, as my wife, my wife has always said, those people who donated, they bought stock in Walter. <laughs> the, the dividend they get now is when Walter goes and plays for them, he better be playing his ass off. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's. I see these um, these posts on Facebook, et cetera, from people who are more or less pleading for donations because they need some kind of medical procedure. Um, and obviously here in the UK, with you know, we've got the NHS. It might not be perfect, but thank God we've got it. Um, and it, it, it always sort of brings tears to my eyes when I see you know, the situation that people find themselves in where it's, you know, health poverty. Well... I don't want to get too political, but I live in the only country in the world now where you can go bankrupt because you get sick. And um, it's it's really a, a very brutal system. And um, I, I'm hoping that people in this country are going to start to come to their senses and see that that health care is a right, not a privilege. Mm. And that. Um, you know, think, things have to change here. They they really do. And unfortunately, with the people who are in power right now, there's not much hope of that. So hopefully it's going to change with the next election. I hope. Mind you, we've got enough problems here. So. <laughs> yeah, but but I know what you mean about the NHS. And, you know, my wife is a Danish citizen and um my kids are Danish citizens and, and they get health care and education for free over there. You know, my um, my son lives over there and has gone to college. Um, my middle son has gone to music school there and my youngest son will be going to a music college in Denmark um, next month. And um, it, it's just a different system and you pay taxes, but you get something for it. Absolutely. Well, going back to the music, uh, where are you um, for m new material? You know, I'm being a being a fan of uh, of your music. I'm always <laughs> always eager, and I always nag people to find out when you know the next album or whatever's coming out. Is it something you're working on at the moment? Well, it's funny you bring that up. I am almost halfway through recording a brand new album of all original music. And um, as a matter of fact, the day Survivor Blues, the day that that was mastered and was sent off to the record label, the very same day, myself and my band went back in the studio and started our next album, which is all original songs. Now, we're not we're not we don't have a deadline for that album. We're working on it slowly and methodically. But um, we're about halfway through um, an album of, of originals. So, you know, hopefully down the line, I know that that will be coming out. Fantastic. Uh, do you, when it comes to writing the album, is it something that you have to lock yourself away in the studio? Or is it something that, you know, when you are out on the road, you've got a little notebook and uh, you're always jotting and making notes? It's, it's kind of weird. When I'm on the road, um, I tend to maybe write lots of lyrics. Right. And then when I'm home, I tend to sit down and, and get all these musical ideas that I record onto a, a little studio in my house or even onto a recorder on my phone. But um, sometimes it's a matter of putting them together. Now, this new album that I'm working on right now, I, I've been writing it with my wife. Um, she's written a lot of songs with me. For instance, she was one of the writers on um, We're All In This Together, which was a song I recorded with Joe Bonamassa. Um, she wrote a song with me um, called Fast Moving Traffic. She, she's uh, really, really quite a great writer. But with this one, I sit down with her and I say, here's a musical idea. And I play the music. And she says, well, that reminds me of this or that reminds me of that. And we take it from there and we've been writing the lyrics together. And um, we've become quite a quite a team of writers together. It's only taken us 30 years, but now we're really <laughs> working together, you know. 
But that's that's an incredible thing. That just you know, you, both of you must find just a real pleasure from that. It's it's really fun, you know. Um, it just happened one night. We we were sitting around watching TV, and she said, "You know," she goes, "I'm just bored watching TV. Let's let's do something." And I said, "Well, hey, what the hell? Let's try writing a song." And boom, twenty minutes later, we had this really really good song so we were like well let's keep doing this and uh so now we're we're kind of halfway through a new a new record together you know well walter it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you again um it's actually the well, first time i've spoken to you since uh, obviously um all the issues you had with your liver so it's great that I, i've got the chance to have a chat with you it really is uh the best of luck, obviously, with uh, rocking the blues. I, I shouldn't have to give you luck, and I don't won't need to because I know it will be an absolute success. And uh, I know certainly you as well as the audience are going to absolutely love it. Well, it, it's going to be quite a night. A lot of uh, if you like blues, rock, and guitar, this is the place you need to be that night. Absolutely. I understand it's your birthday, so why don't you come to the show and? After I play, I always come out to where the CDs are for sale. We can shake hands and say hello in person. That sounds like a plan, Walter. Thanks a lot, Dan. No, but you take care. Okay, you too, man.